Boys, we pushed through it. We went a full week without any UFC events. But, you know, not only that, your boy got resurrected, literally died that whole week, and now I'm back. UFC Vegas 97. We're going to quickly run through that entire card, give you guys my rare predictions on who I think is going to win and how. And I'm not going to lie. There's some pretty decent fights on this card. Definitely not one of the worst Vegas cards we've had this year, but... Opening this card up, Featherweight Division, Zygmantis Rashmaska taking on Nathan Fletcher. Now, Zygmantis 9-2. and two. This is both of their debuts in the UFC. They're supposed to make that on the last fight card, but some sort of injury happened where they had to postpone it till now. But Zygmantis, he has that height and reach advantage. He's currently on a three-fight KO streak, and his last loss was all the way back in 2021. He currently has five KO wins, four submission wins, and zero decision wins. Never lost by submission you know this fight was supposed to be on the ultimate fighter but both of them had some sort of injury where they couldn't fight on the ultimate fighter so it's happening now Zygmantis good fast powerful striking like I said on a three fight KO streak so he definitely has the advantage on the feet but Nathan Fletcher on the other hand eight and one also making his debut two fight winning streak and again his last loss was back in 2021 by KO which is not a good sign here he has one win by KO six submissions and one decision win he honestly this is a this is a fight where Nathan needs to avoid the striking of Zygamantis and Zygamantis needs to avoid the ground game of Fletcher because Fletcher has some really good grappling. He does also have a decent chin. He did get KO'd back in 2021, but other than that, decent chin. But again, he needs to avoid the striking of Zygamantis because I do believe Zygamantis can get it done by KO over Nathan Fletcher, but I think Nathan Fletcher... He's going to play this a little bit smarter than someone like a Zygamantis. He has more ways to win. He can take him down. He can submit him. He can ground and pound. He can hold him down to the rounds over. Give me Nathan Fletcher by a 29-28 decision win. But again, I could 100% see Zygamantis catching Nathan Fletcher and putting him out. But I just think there's more ways for Fletcher to win this fight. Let's move down. Middleweight division. Andre Petrovsky versus Dylan Budcut. Now, Petrovsky, 11 and 4. He has 4 KO wins, 4 submission wins, and 3 decision wins. All of his losses have also came from KO, which is not a good sign. This guy's a very one dimensional fighter. You know, he has good wrestling, but very inconsistent he he honestly keep this between you and me kind of looks like a tart on the feet he only throws like half ass hooks pay attention to this fight he'll throw a hook at maybe like 30 percent power it's only hooks this man only knows how to throw hooks but with all that being said he might look like a tart on the foot but i think he's a better version than budka to be honest Dalen budka seven and three he does have an even height but he has that reach advantage in this fight. He has a one win by KO, two submission wins, and four decision wins. And he's lost by KO, submission, and decision all one time. He's coming off a TKO loss in his debut against Cesar Almeida, where he couldn't really take Cesar Almeida down, which is not a good sign for this, which is not a good sign in this fight. If he can't take Cesar Almeida down, I don't think he's taking Petrovsky down. Plus, I think he's he's a little bit too small to be in this division, which is kind of like a curse because I don't think he can make 170. So I think he's just, I think he's a little bit screwed here. I also don't think he's really that high level in the UFC. Again, I think Petrovsky is just a little bit better version than a Budka. I think Petrovsky is going to go out here and get a 29, 28, 30, 27 decision win. Let's keep moving down though. Women's strawweight division. Jacqueline Amorim taking on Vanessa Demopoulos. Now, Jacqueline 8 and 1. She has that height and reach advantage. She has 2 KO wins, 6 submission wins, and 0 decision wins. She's only lost by decision back against Sam Hughes. Which she did look pretty good in that fight, still lost it, but she did look decent in that fight. She's coming off back-to-back -back finishes to Montserrat Ruiz and Corey McCain. Both of these girls, in my opinion, are a little bit too small for this division. Vanessa Demopoulos, on the other hand, 11 and 5. She has wins by, she has one KO win, four submission wins, and six decision wins. All of her losses have come from decision. She's on a two-fight winning streak, but somehow, like, the only way you can really sum up this girl's career is somehow she wins robbery decisions. She has to have the most robbery decision wins to her name because of that. She does have a good chin, decent takedown defense, she has some good footwork, but, you know, karma is a bitch, and karma is coming to get her. Mark my words. Mark my words. Jacqueline's gonna get the get back of all the girls that Vanessa Demopoulos robbed in this fight, and Jacqueline does have some good power in her hands she has some good takedowns i think it's either gonna be 
Jacqueline by a nasty highlight real KO stiffened Vanessa Demopoulos just because you know it doesn't make sense but karma is working here best believe karma is going to be in this fight so it's going to be a nasty highlight real KO or Jacqueline's going to get some sort of submission win I don't see Vanessa winning another robbery decision even though I believe in her last fight I did call it I did pick Vanessa Demopoulos by a robbery decision I don't think it's going to happen this time I think she's won way too many robbery decisions as of late. I think Carmen's coming together. Give me first round KO win for Jacqueline. Let's move down to the featherweight division. Yai Za taking on Gabriel Santos. Za 24 and 4. He has that height advantage. He has 6 KO wins, 13 submission wins, and 6 decision wins. He has lost by KO one time, submission one time, and decision twice. He's currently on a 3 fight winning streak. Two of them by finishes. This is really like a grappler versus grappler type of fight right here. Za I think is the stronger fighter and he's always looking for that submission over like ground and pound but Gabriel Santos on the other hand 10 and 2 has a small reach advantage nothing really huge here he has won by KO three times submission four times and decision three times lost by KO one time never been submitted and he lost by decision the only thing is this guy hasn't won in the UFC yet he made his debut against Lerone Murphy, which was a tough fight. Then he fought David Onama back in 2023, so he hasn't fought since then. This guy has a better footwork. I think it's going to be a very, very close fight. I think the ground game is going to cancel each other out for these two guys. So I think it's going to be a majority of a striking fight. I did say it's a grappler versus grappler fight, but at the end of the day, I do think their ground game is going to cancel out each other and they're going to be a predominantly on the foot type of fight. I think the footwork for Gabriel Santos is better. I think the striking is slightly better than Zaz. For that reason, give me a, I could see a 20, 29, 28 split decision for Gabriel Santos. So that's what I'm going to go here. Let's go to the flyweight division. That fight, to be honest, this Gabriel Santos versus Zaz is probably my least confident pick out of all these ones. Let's go to the flyweight division. Felipe Dos Santos taking on Andre Lima. Now, Dos Santos, 8-1. He has that reach advantage. He's won twice by KO, three times by submission, and three times by decision. Currently, he's 1-1 one one in the UFC. He made his debut against Manel Cap. He did look really, really good in that fight. Even though he lost, it was a unanimous decision loss. He still looks really good making his debut against someone like a Manel Cap. Dos Santos is a very, very aggressive fighter. He throws a shit ton of volume. He gets hit a lot though, but his pressure, mark my words, his pressure is going to win this fight. Andre Lima, on the other hand, he's 9-0, undefeated. He has an even height with Felipe Dos Santos. You guys also might remember, this is a guy that got bit in the UFC and then got that tattoo of the bite mark, and that's pretty much what he's known for. He wasn't looking too good in that fight, to be honest. He has five KO wins, zero submission wins, and three decision wins with one no contest. He's 2-0 in the UFC against Igor De Silva, the guy that bit him, and Mitch Raposo. Now, this guy, kind of a low-volume striker. This guy struggles so much with pressure. We saw him in the fight where he got bit. He was struggling with the pressure. And if you're struggling with pressure from Igor, best believe Felipe Dos Santos is going to make this look light work. I don't think Andre Lima is going to have much success in here. One thing that Lima does do really good though is he goes to the body early. He mixes it up. He's not one of these guys that has really low level IQ and just goes for the head. Mixes to the body a lot, but I don't think that's going to matter. Like I said, he struggled so much with pressure. Felipe Dos Santos, very aggressive pressure fighter. I think Felipe Dos Santos gets this done. I don't think he KOs Andre Lima. I think he gives him his first loss by decision, 29-28, maybe even 30-27. Let's go down to the featherweight division. Isaac Dolgarian taking on Brendan Marodi. Now, Isaac, 6-1. He has four KO wins, two decision wins, and zero decision wins. He has his last fight against Christian Rodriguez, which, in my opinion, a little bit of a robbery, but it gave him his first decision loss. His first loss regardless, but he's a very good prospect. I believe he's going to be the biggest betting favorite in the UFC when this fight goes down. He has good takedown, decent striking. Like I said, the biggest favorite in UFC history on the betting sites. It's crazy. Brendan, on the other hand, 8-2. He has that height and reach advantage. He has 5 KO wins, 1 submission win, 2 decision wins. He's lost by KO one time, never been submitted, and lost by decision. He's coming off his debut loss to Terrence McKenney in the first round, the first 20 seconds of the first round. And, you know, Brendan is just not UFC level. 
I'm just going to say it. He's not UFC level. He shouldn't be in the UFC. He's going to come into this fight and get KO'd again in the first round. It might not be as fast as Terrence McKinney, but best believe Isaac is going to come out here first round KO, make it look easy. Unfortunately, Brendan going to get shipped to like BKFC or something like that. Let's go down to the light heavyweight division, the main event of these prelims. Ryan Spann versus Ovin St. Pru. Now, Ryan Spann 21 and 10. He has that height advantage. He has 6 KO wins, 12 submission wins, and 13 decision wins. He's lost by KO 4 times, submission 3 times, and decision 3 times. He's coming off a 3 fight losing streak, you know. There's some good guys here like a Nikia Krylov first round submission. Then we have someone like an Anthony Smith. Pretty much what lost him that fight against Anthony Smith is just some terrible terrible IQ. Ryan Spann sometimes just shows he has zero fight IQ. You know, you go into some Habib and you, your fighting IQ is zero, brother. And that's literally Ryan Spann. But then he has that Bogdan Gustav fight. Round 2 KO. It wasn't, you know, Ryan Spann just isn't the smartest guy in the UFC. His last win was two years ago over a no-chin Dominic Reyes. He's a decent fighter, you know, I'll give him that, a decent fighter with zero fight IQ. He should be the faster and stronger fighter, and in this fight, loser gets cut. That's the type of fight it's going to be. <clears throat> OSP, on the other hand, 27 and 17. He has that reach advantage. He has 12 KO wins, 8 submission wins, and 7 decision wins. He's lost by KO 5 times, submission 3 times, and decision 9 times. He's like a 1 win, 1 loss type of fighter as of recently. His last fight against Kennedy, he won that fight by a split decision. Remember that? A split decision. Philip Leans, he lost that fight by TKO. Shogun, he won that fight by, again, split decision. Tanner Bozo, lost by KO. He... He just hasn't looked that good in his past few fights. In the past few years, he hasn't looked that, go that good. He's a very slow and patient fighter. He doesn't throw that much. It's going to be... It's, this fight's going to chalk up to OSP staring at Ryan Spann for a hot minute, waiting for him to throw. And then Ryan Spann's going to catch him with something and put him out. I think Ryan Spann should KO OSP here. Again... He has zero fight IQ, so who knows? He could end up losing this fight. But Ryan Spann should end up winning this fight. Give me Ryan Spann's second round KO. Let's go to that main card now. Lightweight division. Rong Zhu taking on Chris Padilla. Now Rong Zhu 24 and 5. He has an even reach with Chris Padilla. He has 15 KO wins, 6 submission wins, and 3 decision wins with 1 DQ win. He's never lost by KO. He has 4 submission losses and 1 decision loss. He's currently on a 4 fight winning streak. He's a good Good striker with decent pressure this man has pretty he's pretty bad on the back foot i'm not gonna lie he also gets <laughs> he gets hit more than he hits his opponent which is crazy the biggest hole in this guy's game though is his takedown defense and chris padilla 14 and 6 he has that reach advantage he has seven ko wins five submission wins and two decision wins he's lost by ko one time submission twice and decision three times he's on a four fight winning streak only one of them is in the ufc against james Lontop when he got that first round submission on short notice but yeah you know we have one guy whose biggest hole in his game is a takedown defense and we have another guy who his best thing in his game is his takedown so i'm going with chris padilla not really sure why he's an underdog but he has some really good explosive takedowns he's not really good at one thing he's pretty well rounded but those explosive takedowns are are his key to win this fight the only thing is he isn't that good at holding his opponents down but i think over a period of time i think chris padilla will eventually keep getting takedowns and get some sort of submission win i'm saying second round submission win you know and in my opinion this is just a very good stylistic matchup for chris padilla let's go down also in the lightweight division trevor peak taking on yano asher move now trevor peak this is gonna be a banger of a fight but Trevor Peak 9 and 2, he has that reach advantage. He has 8 KO wins, 0 submission wins and 1 decision win. He's only lost by decision. He's currently 1 and 2 in his last 3 fights. Not the greatest, but best believe he's coming back this fight. Bounce back fight. He's a very aggressive, no technique, swanging and banging type of fighter. We love some Trevor Peak in here. He has a high pressure. He'll take one to give one. He's very durable. I think Trevor Peak's getting it done. Yano, on the other hand, 7-1. He has an even height with Trevor Peak. 
He has four KO wins, two submission wins, and one decision win. He's only lost by decision in his last fight to Chris Duncan. He's currently 1-1 one one in the UFC, and the last time he fought was July 2022-2023, so it's been a minute. He's definitely the more well-rounded guy in this fight. He's definitely the more... He has the better technique, but at the end of the day, this is a fist fight. Trevor Peak is coming to knock this boy out. Give me Trevor Peak by a second-round KO. Honestly... Trevor Peak by a first round, first two minute KO. I believe in Trevor Peak. All the signs are showing that Yanel should win this fight, but at the end of the day, it's Trevor Peak. We ride with Trevor Peak on this channel. Let's keep moving down though. Flyweight division, Matt Schnell versus Alessandro Costa. Matt Schnell, he's number 11th in this flyweight division, 16 and 8. He has that height and reach advantage. He has two KO wins, nine submission wins, four decision wins, and one no contest. He has lost five times by KO, twice by submission, and once by decision. He's currently one and four in his last five. He's coming off a back to back KO losses to Matus Nicolau and Steve Ursic. This boy, this boy's chin is zero, brother. You know, this guy, everyone worries about Matt Schnell's chin. Very, very warranted. He has good footwork, but at the end of the day, that chin is gone. We're in that flyweight division. If you regularly get chinned in your fights, I don't know who the hell can pick you to win. Costa, on the other hand, 14-4. and four. He has five KO wins, six submission wins, and three decision wins. He has lost twice by KO, zero by submission, and twice by decision. He's 2-2 two and two in his last four fights. He's lost to Amir Albazi by KO. He's got a TKO win over Jimmy Flick. I lost a decision to Steve Ursic and got a TKO K over Kevin Borjas. Now, he's a good striker, decent takedowns, good output. He's a very powerful striker. It's a no-brainer here. We're going Costa by a second round KO. Let's keep going down. Featherweight division, Steve Garcia versus Kyle Nelson. I'm, I believe Kyle Nelson was supposed to fight Cater, but it is what it is. Steve Garcia, 16-5. and five. He has that height and reach advantage. He has 13 KO, 0 submissions, 3 decisions. He's lost 1 time by KO, 1 time by sub, and 3 times by decision. He's currently on a 4-fight KO win streak against Chase Hooper, Chailan, Nordenbeki, Mel Quizzle Costa, and Sungwoo Choi. He has very powerful striking. Decent speed. He mixes it up too. Kyle Nelson, on the other hand, 15-5. and five. He has 6 KO wins, 4 submission wins, and 6 decision wins. He has lost by KO twice, submission once, and decision two times. Currently on a 3-fight win streak against Blake Builder, Fernando Padilla, and Bill Aljo. He has good power in his hands. He does have that dog in him, but Steve Garcia, I think this is Steve Garcia's fight to win. I think Steve Garcia is going to get a second round KO over Kyle Nelson. I'm not going to lie. He's on that 4-fight KO streak. I think he's gonna make it five he's gonna get a ranked opponent next being that top 15 yeah let's keep moving down women's flyweight division we have this co-main event against jessica andrage number six ranked versus number eighth ranked natalia silva jessica andrage 26 and 12 10 ko wins eight submission wins and eight decision win she has lost five times by ko four times by submission and three times by decision she did just snap her three fight losing streak recently and bounced back with a two fight winning streak against Mackenzie Dern and Marina Rodriguez. The one thing about Jessica Andrade is she's very, very strong, but she has some pretty terrible striking defense. Like that one time when she just ran face first into Zhao Nong and got knocked out. But Natalia Silva, 17 and 5, she has that height and reach advantage. She has 5 KO wins, 7 submission wins, and 4 decision wins. She's lost 1 time by KO, 2 times by submissions, and 2 times by decisions. Her last loss was against Marina Rodriguez back in 2017. She's honestly, she's turned into a really big prospect in this flyweight division. She's 5-0 and in the UFC. She's fought some good competition. She's extremely fast. Some good, she's a better striker out of the two. She's very well-rounded. I think Natalia Silva is going to put a clinic on Jessica Andrade for the entire three three rounds and get a decision win i think she's gonna keep her at bay with her reach i think she's gonna be too fast she might even drop just her Kondraj. i don't think she's gonna finish her but i think she's gonna just batter her for three rounds straight give me natalia silva by a 30 27 decision win let's go to this main event now welterweight division welterweight division my throat is dying number six ranked gilbert burns taking on number 8th ranked Sean Brady. I'm going to make this one fast, simple, and sweet. I think Gilbert Burns is going to KO Sean Brady in the third round. Sean Brady, we've never seen go into five rounds. 
He has decent grappling with some pretty bad striking. I think the grappling of Sean Brady and Gilbert Burns is going to cancel each other out. And then we have the striking, which I think Gilbert Burns is miles ahead of Sean Brady. Give me Gilbert Burns by a third round, maybe even fourth round KO win, maybe TKO. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching to the end of the video. Out of all these fights, which ones are you guys most excited to watch? Me personally, I gotta go with a Trevor Peak one. I love watching me some Trevor Peak. So praying my boy Trevor Peak gets it done. Praying that I start feeling better soon and my voice doesn't continuously kill me. But yeah, boys, there's really not that much else left to say except for I will see you guys in my next video.